Loop is not going to replace teams. All right. Teams can't True. do what Loop does. How are we going to make them seamless mm -hmm. together? Mm -hmm. um, how are we going to make it the, all of the things work? Um, you know, with teams, it's one of the things that I think they really uh, have challenges with. I mean, the reality is they, they, when they built the tool and kind of had that, that's the last tool that they, you know, this is the place where you, where, where you do your work. Um, you know, a lot of the deep nuances of how that really works in the real world was left to kind of an afterthought or a, a future thing to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, and they need to sort that is the next thing they need to sort out. Hey everyone, welcome back to Make Others Successful, a podcast where we share insights, stories, and strategies to help you build a better workplace and in turn, make others successful. Uh, we'll do intros really quick. If this is your first time here, my name is Mitch Harama. Uh, I do a lot of our operations here in marketing and um, sometimes get on technical projects too. Matt Dressel, I am in charge of communication collaboration here at Bulb Digital. And I'm Emma, I'm our project manager. So I work on a little bit of everything, um, which leads us to our topic, which will be about a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. We uh, like to talk about ourselves and kind of call ourselves Microsoft 365 experts, which is a big term because Microsoft 365 is always he, changing. He's, he's the expert. He's the expert. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure I'd put myself no. in the bucket. But um, between all of us, we do work within Microsoft 365 on quite a few of the tools. So today we want to talk through what has changed. Um, we'll go back as far as maybe the last three to six months. And what are our thoughts on some of the updates and what is coming down the pipeline? Yeah. Right. Let's transition to talking about Loop because that was rolled out kind of interesting in the last six to maybe even 12 months when they started with Loop components and have now talked uh, through releasing the Loop app. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start with components. And what struck the both of you when you first saw the power of Loop components? So Loop components were always interesting to me. They were really exciting to me. Uh, however, they have always been, like I pretty quickly said, they're not really going to be very helpful to me. Um, and it's because they didn't have the ability to really share with external users the way I wanted to. They weren't in channels. Like I, I don't do stuff in chat. Like we don't, mm -hmm. we don't chat. We use channels. Well, I can't do a loop component in a channel. I can only mm -hmm. do it in a chat. Um, so for me, it pretty quickly, it became not useful to me um, in, in any way, shape or form. But the vision of where it was headed having these components where I can, you know, you know, edit content in a very collaborative way, in a very ad hoc way, mm -hmm. was very powerful and was exciting, for sure. Let's overview Loop really quick, just for someone who probably doesn't know, because it's, it has just been announced for general availability. It's been yeah, this yep. weird, like, preview state for a long time where IT had to enable it for you. And it never felt like it was like fully baked. Like, should I put my stuff in here and really start using it? We're junkies for that stuff. So we jumped in and, and decided to use it. But a lot of people probably don't, you know, really realize what loop is. Uh, so the components aspect of it is where it started. So mm -hmm. they, they built this thing where it's like, hey, you can create a table right here in a chat and have multiple people edit it and work on it together. And it always stays up to date. And this concept of just this constantly live thing that lived in context of other apps uh, was really cool. I'll, I'll give a real world example that I think blew my mind the first time I saw it is how many times have you sat down and thought, oh, I really want someone else to review this email before we send this off. Mm -hmm. To edit an email real time with another person in the email, both sitting at your own computers, wherever you are in the world, mm -hmm. was pretty radical. I mean, mm -hmm. I just, that never, you never really were able to do that. Mm -hmm. But Loop Components made it possible. Yeah, and it, it truly was a component model. Like, they started with a model that is very much, we're going to do this for a small piece of content that you can live in a Word document and can live in a chat. It can live in, an you email. know, an email. Yeah. It can live wherever you need it to live. It can live. Um and as you said, it like you update it in one location, so you update it in the chat, and the person who has the email also sees that update mm -hmm. immediately. It's just goes trans trans uh, transcends <laughs> all of the you know the mediums the that we're using for its collaboration. Um, and it it's it's a great concept. Um, 
But like I said, for us, it's I challenging. I remember the moment where I said, man, I'm so excited for Loop. Like, Loop is coming out. And you're like, Loop has existed for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't even use it. It's just these couple things in Teams or whatever. And I was like, no, 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 you don't get it. There's Loop is, that's not Loop. That's like Loop components. Like, that's, there's something broader outside of that. And that's what leads us to the the app, the Loop app, which... Again, wasn't immediately obvious what it was, but it, yeah, their marketing on it was not great. Well, it's in the preview. It's in this like not not released state, really. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we weren't even sure if we we should call it the app, the yeah. Loop app, for mm-hmm. a while. Uh, so the the gist of that is there's three kind of layers to Loop. One is workspaces, so you can collaborate with people on your team. You can add them to a workspace and see a collection of hierarchical pages, which is the next segment, which is just a very simple text-based, think like a Microsoft Word document, but without any of the the strings of a document and more just like on a page. And then within those pages, you could have components, Mm -hmm. which then you could link out to the other spots. But you don't have to have components. Right. 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 So Mm -hmm. the component concept is to say, well, I want to be able to take this piece of this page and share it with someone else separate from the rest of the page. So you could just have loop the page and have content in the page. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's a uh, it, as I said, I th- it's been I think their 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 discussion of the strategy and how it fits has been a challenge um, from the get go. But I uh, it has been the app itself has been the transformative thing for us in particular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what really sticks out to me is their long-term vision with all of it uh, is to bring as many of the tools that they've created within Teams into one place that integrates everything. And I feel like I haven't seen an app from Microsoft that really does that well until Loop. Uh, I know they've they've potentially tried this before, yeah. but I actually really think it's going to work with Loop and the way I'm seeing meeting notes and and just everything tied together where the meeting recording is and it feels like their vision is to make it a one-stop shop spot i don't know if they're there yet but i think they will get there yeah i think about teams when you think about that concept of like this is your one place to go for your work day and that has some success i think like depending on your your uh how much you have adopted that tool but loop is sort of this this like step child like this yes. thing that is coming from behind that uh i think yeah you're right is going to serve as this it's it's like it's the somewhere in between teams and like a sharepoint team site and like one note like yes. somewhere it's it's storing information about things that is in a casual setting that allows people to all just go in and consume content in a like I, I'll keep saying the word casual way, right. but it's collaborate in a casual yeah. way too. I mean, it's it's a place that serves where you can be working together, not on a finished document. Right. You know, it, it really provides for that brainstorming. And the thing I love the most about Loop, um, which you know has copied other tools as well, the formatting is just so simple. You you kind of are forced to choose between their three headings and, you know, their different bulleted lists. Stripped but down it has, for sure. It has everything you need, um, and it makes everything look really consistent and ready to share externally or to a leadership um, mm-hmm. It has audience. enough guardrails where you're not going to make something ugly. Right. Right? You're not going to be able to choose your, yeah, like, <laughs> I digress. People can make some crazy looking, I remember SharePoint classic pages. Distracting, like, just, just, yes. Uh, but Loop is... Bare bones, simple, Clean. looks nice. You're not going to spend waste any time no, on just formatting. focus on the content, and it does a good job. The the uh, you talk about it being the one stop shop, and there was a conversation about it being like I think that's the I think that's the thing that Microsoft still has to figure out with it, um, which is uh, t- Loop is not going to replace Teams. Right, Teams can't True. do what Loop does. How are we going to make them? seamless together Mm -hmm. um how are we going to make it all of the things work um you know with teams it's one of the things that i think they really uh have challenges with i mean the reality is they they when they built the tool and kind of had that that's the last tool that they you know this is the place where you where, where you do your work um you know 
a lot of the deep nuances of how that really works in the real world was left to kind of an afterthought or a, a future thing to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, and they need to sort that is the next thing they need to sort out, right? Uh, I Luke, think they will. I, I, yeah. They have to, they, yeah. in order for it to be successful, I think yeah. they have to they have to figure that out. So, but uh, bottom line, like I don't want this to become a loop. Po po I do podcast. <laughs> well, well, then we, we should have we chosen like, a different yeah. topic. <laughs> the, the the last thing that I'll just for extra context, if anyone has used Notion before, it's like mm. Microsoft's version of Notion. It's not as fully baked as Notion yet because of the it's a preview. It's it's still getting there, but for someone that understands the concept of Notion and how you manage data and have all information in one spot, very similar concept. And so I'm super excited to see Microsoft tackling that. So the big thing that I, because when we started using Loop, Notion was the was another alternative that was We almost discussed. did it. Uh, I the, almost the did it. The big benefit is <laughs> that it's integrated with everything else. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's seamless to get in, out of it, manage it, maintain it you know, manage compliance, not like all of that is all the same as everything else that you're, that we're dealing with on a regular basis. If you remember the feeling of going from using a Walkman to an iPod, that's what it feels <laughs> like going from one note to loop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be my, you know, or a flip phone to a smartphone. It just feels I as did someone CD who player to MP3 player. That was, yeah. Me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I could have 13 songs in this little loop square. just feels like it organizes information <laughs> and integrates at such a higher level than not that it's supposed to replace OneNote, but if you're using OneNote and you're not using Loop, just, I think it should replace OneNote. I'll it, be I'll be upfront. Well, it definitely replaces OneNote, but I mean, it's not only doing that. Yeah. Not, it not can actually. do so much it, more. Yeah, they'll they'll never say. Yeah, yeah they'll never say that. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think they've they've decided. As I think yeah. they're they're answering. I don't that. see a place where you would ever need OneNote if you started using Loop to its yeah. full capacity. We also haven't said we're part of like a private preview, so we've been like. <laughs> working with their team or like helping give feedback to their team. And one of the things on every survey that they give us is how upset would you be if Loop went away? I would not want to do our work the way we do it if yeah. Loop went away because yeah. it supports the way we do projects. It's become completely. integral for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'd really miss it. Me too. <laughs> Hope they don't take it so, away. Uh, to wrap it all up, it's in general availability now. It's not this weird preview thing. So go out there like, Again, the external access thing is still an issue, but if you want to collaborate internally with your team, mm -hmm. go try Loop. Like, yeah. Or even just to organize your own thoughts. Yes. Yeah. yes. It is a really great tool. 